We saw in the previous video that we could summarize a set of rows by rolling them up into a single row and calculating some statistics for the fields that we're rolling up. So for example, we're calculating average rating and we're calculating this unweighted average for a, from a set of rows that represent all the episodes of The Simpsons and getting a single row back. But sometimes you want more detail than that. So for example, one of the things that we might want to do is look at the change in average rating for The Simpsons on a season by season basis. So for example, let me go ahead and open, um, let's see, title episode columns. So we see there's a season number, episode number, and what we really want is a separate row for each season. Now, we can do that using the group by clause of the select statement. So I'm going to start by copying that query, pasting in a copy. And then after the where clause, I'm going to add the line group by, and then this is entitled episode dot season number. And what this is going to do is it's going to roll up all of the results from here but it's going to roll them up into separate buckets, one bucket for each distinct value of season number. So let's also include the season number in the select statement. So let me go ahead and say te.season number as season, and then execute this version of the query. And I'm going to get rid of these total votes and total points because they're not adding much at right now. So just include the average rating and the unweighted average. There we go. So this can more usefully be displayed if I order by season. So let's add that as well. And here's the final version of that query. Now we had some episodes that had null for season and uh, null for average rating and unweighted average, and they get rolled up into this row here. But then for season one, season two, season three, and so on, we're getting the correct averages. Now, if you look at these ratings changes over time, we see that uh, The Simpsons really hit its peak in terms of overall ratings right around season five, season six, season seven. Um, and then there was a pretty sharp decline in ratings starting around season nine. And it sort of trails off, hits somewhere in the high six point X's. And then last couple of seasons, even, even worse. Um, and so this is the kind of data that we could toss into a graph if we had Excel available, for example. Um, but it shows that instead of rolling the results up into a single row, I've rolled the results up into one row for each distinct value of season number. Now, related to that is, what if I want to include the name of the, season, of the series as well? And that's going to be the primary title of the TB2 table. But what happens if I try to include that in the select clause? So TB2 dot primary title as series name. Now you may think that this is straightforward because it's always going to be the Simpsons across all of these rows, but I know that because I know about the database, but SQL doesn't. So the error I get, column title basics dot primary title is invalid in the select list because it's not contained in either an aggregate function or the group by clause. So basically what's happening here is that I'm trying to ro roll up separate rows into one row. And when I put primary title in the select clause, that means it has to roll up different values of 
primary title into one value in that summary row. But I haven't told it how to do that. I can either tell it using an aggregate function, um, average, min, max, sum, and count, but I can't really apply that to the name of a series. I mean, how do you average the string, the Simpsons? Um, or you can put the column name in the group by clause. So when you put it in group by, it says create a separate row of summary results for each distinct value in group by. So that says the way I'm going to aggregate the primary title is I'm not going to aggregate the primary title. I'm always going to have a separate row if there's a different value there. And there won't be a different value, so I'll just get one row coming back for each season number. So let's go ahead and add tb2.primaryTitle to the group by clause. Now it knows how to handle primary title in the select clause. And I don't get my error. So that's something to keep in mind. When you get that error about um, something not appearing in um, an aggregate function or in the group by clause, it's because everything in your select clause has to either be inside of an aggregate function, average sum, min, max, count, or inside of the group by clause, even if you know there's only one value. Now, order by is similar. So for example, I can order by season number because season number is in the group by clause. And so um, SQL knows how to handle multiple rows that have different season numbers. But what if I tried to order by title basics dot start year instead? Actually, it should be tb1 dot start year. So that's the start year for the episode. See, I get the same error because it doesn't know how to take start year and roll up multiple values into a single value. Um, once again, I can either put that in the group by, or I can use an aggregate function. For example, I can use min of tb1.startYear. And I think the way this is set up is all the episodes are going to have the same start year, which is the start year for the series. But, but now that I've told it how to aggregate tb1.startYear, now it knows how to order by that. So that's one way of fixing the problem. And let me go ahead and add start year here as well, just so I can see what I'm working with. And this is going to cause an error once again, because I haven't told it how to aggregate start year, right? So I could fix that the same way as I fixed it in the order by, by using min of start year, or I can use average of start year. So this will do the same thing. This, this will work. So actually, I see the average of start year since an entire season happens in one year. And I was wrong, by the way. Each episode has the um, episode year as start year. But since all the episodes in a particular season are in the same year, when I average it, I just get the year that the season happened. So that's one way of fixing it, by giving it an aggregate function to combine that value. The other way to fix it is to add tb1.startYear to the group by. And once again, that works fine. Now you'll notice that uh, here I have some a little weirdness going on um, because what I said before was wrong. Um, half the season happened before January and half the season happened after, actually season one, half the season started before January of 1990 and half the season started after January of 1990. And so, so that's why I get two separate rows here. So this may not be what you want, or it may be what you want. 
So I'm getting a separate row for 1990 in season one and for 1990 in season two because both season number and start year are in the group by clause. So each combination of distinct values in these three columns are going to give me one row and the results coming back. So if that's not what I want, I can use min or average for start year. Min start year here. It's ordered by season number again. This works. And if I actually want it broken down into separate years for each half of the season, this will work. Now, inside of this group by clause, I can also make a calculation. So for example, what if I want to put each row into a bucket by, um, by a rating on a scale from 1 to 10? So um, I want to know how many episodes got a rating of 6, how many ratings got an episode of 7, how many ratings got an episode of 8, and so on. And so I want to take the average rating, which is like 6.5, and I want to convert that into just six and then count up how many of them got just six. So let's start with, I'm going to copy this query again. And for this one, I'm going to not group by season number, primary title, or start year. I'm going to start just by grouping by rating. And then I'm going to order by, um, yeah, TR by average rating. And I'm going to do that in descending order so that the tens are at the top. Now this is going to have decimals, so I'm going to get more buckets than I want, but this will be good to start with. And let's go TR dot average rating as rating and count star as number of episodes. So let's go ahead and execute that. So I see there was one episode with 9.3, one with 9.2, four with 9.1, and so on. And then I have a big bump at 8.2 a little tiny bump around 8.5. And then another bump down here at 7.7. .7. And then really big bump here from 7.2 and trailing off to 7.1. And then it sort of trails off into just the really abysmally bad episodes. So this is giving me a separate bucket for each average rating and showing me the number of episodes in each bucket. But I can do a little math here. Um, so how do I get a, take a number like 9.3. Let's go for the ratings here. Um, I'm going to open the columns in total ratings. And we see that this is, an, this is considered numeric for one. If I want to turn this into just a whole number, I can convert it into numeric four comma zero. So let's select top 50 star from title ratings. So here's the data in title ratings, including the average rating. And then if I want to turn this into a whole number, I can do convert numeric four comma zero average rating as let's call that. It's not rounded, it's truncated. So here's one way of doing that. 
So this gives me, it actually does round it. Um, when it does the conversion, it rounds it. That's, I wasn't sure. Um, um, if I want it truncated, I think floor will do that. Floor average rating as floor. Let's do this as round one. And then if I want to round it up, so 5.8 gets to be 6, 6.2 gets to be 7, and so on, that's ceiling. And I believe there's a round function as well, which is probably going to end up giving me the same thing as this did. So round average rating as round two. So here are different ways of taking a decimal number and turning it into a whole number. And this one takes uh, either two or three arguments. Um, I think the second argument is like a uh, width. Let me try four here and see if that works. And if not, I'm going to try something different. It may be zero for zero places after the decimal, or it may be four for four wide. Let's execute that. Okay, so I think I want a zero here for zero after the decimal point. Yeah, so that rounded it up, leaving a zero. Yeah, 5.8 gets rounded to six. Um, 6.2 gets rounded down to six. So the convert actually did the same thing as the round, except convert um, converted it to having nothing after the decimal point. This just converted it to having zero after the decimal point. Up here in this group by, I'm going to use the convert because I like that result the best. So it's going to round it into numeric four comma zero, and then use that for the group by, and then for average rating here, I'm going to repeat that same expression. And same thing here. Okay, so this is how many nines, eight, seven, sixes, fives, and fours. Now, I'm repeating this expression in three different places in um, Microsoft SQL Server, Transact SQL. Um, since I'm giving this a name in the select clause, I can repeat that name here as well. So I can group by rating in both the group by and the order by clause. And let's see if that works. Actually, I can't group by rating in the group by clause, but I can do it in order by. So here we go.